Springtime is finally here and you guys know what that means. The bass are fixing to start spawning. So before we get started with today's video, I'm going to give you guys one tip that I can guarantee you will help catch bigger fish, especially if you fish in smaller lakes and ponds. So I've traveled across the southeast and fished in over 100 different lakes and 99% of them are all the exact same. All of the biggest fish in a pond or a lake live in the deepest part November through February and that's typically always near the dam. And each year, right whenever that water temperature gets in the perfect spawning range, those big fish will move from the deepest water in the lake to the first good shallow spawning area. And it's usually within 50 yards of the dam. And I'm going to give you a couple of examples here. So last year I was fishing with one of my good friends, Josh, and the very first spot we started at was the west bank closest to the dam. He ended up catching the biggest bass of his life at 9.03 pounds. And we also came back later and caught a couple others that were in the 5 to 6 pound range all off of that one stretch. The biggest females will always go to the nearby shallow water. I'll give you a couple more examples. One of them, we we're on about an 80 acre lake. This is the dam and the standpipe right here. It's a bunch of riprap. We hit the first cove on the west bank and ended up catching the biggest fish of that day right off of that pier. Another good example is when one rod came fishing with me. You see that long stretch of riprap? That's the dam. He caught his PB in the very first cove right off the dam. So just keep this tip in mind this spring when you're fishing different bodies of water. Find that deepest water first and then find the closest shallow water to it and I can guarantee you, you'll catch bigger fish. Big one. Oh my goodness. That's what I'm talking about. I don't know what it is with starting out the day with big fish, but whoo, this is going to be a fatty up under the boat. Oh my gosh. Look at the head on that fish. Oh, don't jump. <laughs> Come on around. I got to get her all the way around the boat so I can get her in. What a giant. All right, I should have her now. Yes, sir. Giant bass to start out the day. Folks, that's literally my second cast. 2021 is starting out right for me. Look at that. It just popped right out. That's one of the best baits you can use right there in pre-spawn. Look at that fatty. What a beauty. That's a beauty. That's how we start the morning, folks. So folks, we literally just put the boat in. We just backed her on off into this pond. But whenever I launched, look at all the dead thread fin shad up on the bank so i wasn't even planning on fishing that but once i saw that there was that kind of bait in there there is no better bait than the trocar swim blade so i paired it up with a little dipper in the sexy shad color and literally like the second cast right out here giant i'm pumped up now liz it's time to go get yours yep. Liz, hooked up. Nice. There you go, pull him right over here. Woo, he's a fat one. Got him. That is a nice, chunky, large mouth right there. Good one, Liz. <laughs> Folks, I figured out why all the shad are up on the surface. Looks like they're dumping shad into this lake. So we're going to get up here and get a close-up view of it. So today he's going to be stocking 10,000 threadfin shad in this pond. And there's a little over 3,000 in each of these three tanks. And the method is pretty simple. He basically opens the valve up and all the water dumps the shad off into the pond. So threadfin shad and brim are the top two bait fish stocked in ponds. And one of the reasons you really want to get the threadfin shad in the spring is because right around May is when all the shad spawn and that's when you'll see them in low light conditions jumping up flickering spawning on hard surfaces like limbs and things like that so if you stock them right before the shad spawn 
your populations could double. And another key thing is you always want to have a lot of structure and cover in ponds. That way these little snacks can survive because if you just have basically a bowl shaped pond with nowhere for them to hide, these shad probably wouldn't even make it a month. But in this lake with all the trees, no problems. So all in all, it just takes about five minutes. And this is what a depth finder looks like whenever you have a big cloud of shad right up under the boat. Well folks, this is the first time ever fishing after they just dumped 10,000 bait fish in a lake, but that should be the perfect bait to match the hatch. So I can see them all up here on the surface. I've already seen a couple bass busting them. So we're gonna see if we can make ours stand out in the crowd. There he is, there he is. <laughs> Liz on back to back cast, I hear you. Another solid fish. <laughs> Gotta love hearing Liz's giggle. Alright, I think we'll flip him on up in here. Alright, another fat one, man, Liz. That's unreal how fat that little guy is. That fish looks like it's six pounds when you hold it, <laughs> and it's probably only two and a half. <laughs> Guys, this is a little bit too easy of fishing, so we just basically got on the trolling motor, and I'm sitting there watching the shad on the graph, and we're just trolling our baits right back behind them, and these bass are catching up to them. A little bit different way of fishing, <laughs> but it's a once in a lifetime. We've never been able to have a shad truck deliver on the same day we were fishing, so... So folks, I finally got the report from Allen up there on the bank. So Southeastern Pond Management stocked this pond with a bunch of shad yesterday and some of them died. So they brought another truckload in to, I guess, replace the ones that died. So shout out to Southeastern Pond. That seems like a pretty solid thing to do as a company. <laughs> that first bass could have eaten you. Get a little fat things. The wind's starting to pick up a little bit. That may or may not help out our bite, but I wanted to take a quick second and say thanks to all the people who support our tackle shop, BamaFrogs.com. Liz was actually an interior designer about three to four years ago before we had the shop. And all the support from you guys, she's able to quit her job and now she basically runs a tackle shop. So that's kind of unique from a woman's standpoint. But really there's nothing different about our tackle shop except we only fish with the products that we would be out here on the lake using ourselves. So for instance, before we would ever list this bait on our tackle shop, we went out to multiple different lakes, caught big bass in different spots. So that's when we'll recommend it to you guys. I just wanted to take a second and say thanks again to all of you that have supported us over the years. It's hard to compete with that guy right there. An in-depth look at the baits we were using. A lot of you guys may think, well, when should I use that swim blade? You definitely want to use it when the shad truck shows up. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. So pre-spawn. So basically right now, if you're watching this video, you want to be throwing that. So we came to the lake with crawfish and lizards tied on, but the bass weren't pulled up yet. So right before the spawn happens, they'll try to eat every shad in sight. That's why they get so fat. And because they brought those smaller shiners in, we went with a little dipper and sexy shad and a three-aught hook with a one-eight ounce swim blade. But we saw some spawning bass at a pond right up the road. So Liz is gonna go try to get on them. There, you see the ripples? Got it. May have been the male. Yep, set it. All right, folks, a little spring bass fishing 101. You get right out here, and you gotta be real quiet. There's big ripples, let's go. You gotta be real quiet, ease up to the edge of the bank, and these fish are coming up just to spawn. We're right here at about 30 minutes before dark. 
they're coming up. I mean, this is literally the first day they're moving up to spawn. You gotta keep your voices low. We don't really see any beds. We just know they're moving up and they're in this area. She's peppering it. Got him. All right, Liz got the mail. Try to get him up here quick. All right, got the mail out of the way. In the area. We should be able to get that female. Go. Got her. <laughs> she ain't a giant female, but... Hey, it's an honest day's work right there. That's how you catch the male and the female. I don't know if you guys could see that, but Liz was sitting there bouncing the tip, showing what you were doing, how you were tapping the tip. She let it sit right there where she knew it was and was sitting there bouncing that tip. Got the female to bite. And you can see right down there, oh, there's a male right there swimming by. There's another little bed down there. We didn't even really know that there was a bed. There's a female right there browsing that. They're just now moving up. It's fun. Good job. So that's going to wrap up this video, but always keep that tip in the back of your head about finding the shallowest water closest to the deep water where they hang out all winter. But I hope y'all enjoyed this video. Make sure you hit the subscribe button so you can follow along with all of our other fishing adventures, and we will see you all next time.